most of the time I do my trammel work with a jigsaw independently of trammel work with a writer. Uh, they came together when I was doing that gothic bench, and you may have had a look at those videos. And in that you would have seen that I was using the Festal accessory that comes with the Carvex 420 jigsaw to do uh, the trammeling using the jigsaw. And uh, this is a very good arrangement, it's a lovely trammel. And it has a 4mm pin which is used for the trammel point. Um, unfortunately, my homemade trammel I was using for the router, uh, I was using 5mm pins. Uh, and uh, this became an issue at one point in the film because I had to drill some extra holes. So I thought, right, now's the time to sort out my router trammel once and for all. Although I'm doing this for the OF 1400 router, uh, what I'm going to show you is applicable to whatever router you have. And basically, I'm going to make up a far better quality trammel than this, one that is adjustable, and um, I think you'll see it's going to look quite smart. Now, this is the a trammel that I've used a few times recently and it's characterised by this 30mm hole here uh, which takes my 30mm guide bush which is part of my UJK uh, guide bush set and the reason I favour these guide bushes is that uh, not only are they well made but they've got a, a really good range of sizes uh, which means there's lots of things you can do with them not just trammel work and I'll be showing you some of those things at another date but uh, what uh, makes this trammel so good is that the uh, guide bush sits in that hole there. Uh, the trammel uh, point is chosen at one of these holes here. And then as the trammel rotates, the writer is always facing the same way towards you. And that means that you don't have power leads and uh, hoses getting all mixed up whilst you're doing your trammel work. It really is a boom. Uh, and that's as opposed to the old way of doing trammel work where you actually fix the router to the trammel. And that way you get in a real muddle. And I'm going to use this 5mm thick uh, yellow Perspex. And this will be absolutely ideal. Now getting hold of Perspex can be pretty tricky. Uh, it's difficult to post and therefore buying it from the internet is not necessarily ideal. And so I approached my local sign makers, their company called T-Signs, based in Salisbury. And I spoke to Lawrence, who was really helpful. And uh, you can pick up uh, offcuts uh, from your local sign maker if they're willing to uh, sell them to you uh, for uh, probably about the same or maybe a little bit uh, better prices than you would get on the internet. So uh, uh, contact your local sign maker first. Anyway, Lawrence gave me some good advice about how to handle this material and I'm very grateful to him. And what I've done now is I've put my writer in the corner area here and I've drawn around the curved uh, edges of the writer and I've turned it round uh, because there are some flats here, uh, so that I can uh, continue the curve to make one big circle. I've put in a V-grooving bit in the writer, and I've set the depth such that when I plunge, I will make just like a millimetre uh, indent in the centre. So I'll just make sure that I'm lined up with the circle I've just drawn, and I'll just make that indent. <laughs> There it is, so I now know where uh, the centre is of the circle I've just drawn. Now the next thing to do is to decide just how big the trammel is going to be. Now this old wooden one I made uh, would only go out to about 280 uh, millimetres. And I really want to have a radius of at least 300, which then allows me to be able to do uh, circles as big as 600 millimetres. So I'm going to go bigger than that and I'm going to measure it out using this. Now remember, if you're measuring to the centre and you want to do 300 millimetre circles, uh, then it may well be that you've got to add a little bit uh, to take account of the diameter of the cutter that you're using. So I'm going to go for 320 uh, from uh, the centre. That will be the limit of where my trammel point will be. But I want my trammel to go just a little bit beyond that uh, and so uh, to give it a bit of strength and so I'm going to add another uh, 25 millimetres 
and, and I'm going to draw a nice straight line across here. I've measured and it's going to be parallel to this uh, face edge here. That then shows me where I've got to do my cut to cut the whole thing out. Now this is too big a cut to do on the bandsaw. I could use my TS55, uh, but I'm going to give it a try using the Capex. And uh, I know that the, the, the cut will be a little bit short at this end, but I'll then turn it round and finish it off. I've set the saw speed as low as it will go because this is Perspex. I've got it clamped down reasonably well and I'm going to take it very, very slowly. I've turned this round and I've checked that the blade will fit into the slot that I've already cut. And for this next cut, I'm going to use the table saw. I've got the CMS unit with the TS55R mounted in it. And I've got that saw uh, speed control down at its very lowest. So, I've set up the vents and I'm going to make my cut. I'll bring you in so you can see what I've done. Now today was the first time I've used the CMS unit with the TS55R to cut Perspex and I didn't realise just how good a job it would make. It's absolutely perfect and so it's changed my approach to this particular task. I've used the Capex before and that's brilliant too uh, but other longer cuts or awkward cuts I've done on the bandsaw uh, but I'm going to try and avoid the bandsaw from now on. The key is to have the speed of the saw, whether it's the Capex or the TS55, have that down as low as it will go. Right, so this is what we've got so far. I've cut this piece, uh, which will be the moving part uh, of the trammel, and it will fit in a slot, which I've yet to cut, uh, which will be in the main trammel unit. So this will be moving in a slot there. And that slot will be open at this end. So to strengthen it, I've got this piece, which will be fixed to this side and this side uh, so that we don't get any uh, risk of it splitting somewhere down here. So those are the two bits I've cut so far. I've got to cut another piece which will go across here like so and this will be fixed onto uh, the sliding part and on each side uh, that piece will have some slots and through those slots will go screws which will be uh, fixed through the trammel so that then uh, that part can move to and fro and um, taking this with it. And then we'll have a series of holes in here and so depending uh, where you are uh, so you put your trammel point in the respective hole. So therefore we don't have to have this moving or able to move huge distances, it only has to be able to move uh, to and fro by a little bit. Right, I've started to cut the slots now which will be used for this plate uh, to move to and fro. It, it'll all become very clear once I've uh, cut this off uh, and you'll see exactly what's going on. But um, I've set this up at the right distance away so I can do the outer two, I'll then change it so I can do the inner two. are being made at the very lowest speed that the writer can be set at and all I've got to do now is take this piece out here and then I can cut my uh, piece off completely. <laughs> That's all the cutting out done uh, for these slots and now I'm going to cut this piece off and then you'll see exactly what's going on. And there's the 30mm hole. 
Now you recall the uh, reference point that we put uh, here uh, at the very beginning. Uh, I'm now transferring marks at 100 millimetres from that, 200 millimetres, and 300 millimetres. This is yet to have a series of holes uh, placed in it, which will allow us to have uh, variable positions for the trammel point. Now, in order that this can be adjusted to and fro and then held in place, we have this piece of plastic which will be fixed on to this and then there will be four screws going through the body of the uh, trammel and these screws will correspond to these slots here. I've glued on this end piece to help stiffen up the ends here. Uh, I've glued on this uh, piece which raises the writer up so that the uh, guide bush won't mark the wood. And I'm now about to do some holes so that this piece can be screwed onto uh, the slide mechanism. Uh, it's not sufficient just to glue these two together because it could be under quite a bit of strain as one's pulling the, uh, the writer around. Now, in order to get this set up correctly, I've had to check that it's not all nice and square here uh, because then that means that these slots will run uh, parallel to the action, which is very important. Well, it's now time for the final assembly. I've glued and screwed uh, this piece onto the runner and it fits in uh, like so. You thread that under there and then it goes down on the surface like that. And then it can be screwed into two places, uh, the forward position here and the rear position. And in the rear position it gives you uh, some extra opportunities for slightly longer uh, trammel work. And I've done all the countersinking as you can see on the far side and then turn it over like so, put the washers on and that's it. Uh, now, because these screws are fairly big-headed, um, that means that you probably would not need to use a tool on the other side to hold them still whilst you tighten them. So we can set this into a position, tighten up, and it's then good to go. I went round these corners uh, with the Rotex 90, I had some 120 grit paper, and I did it in rotary mode just to make sure those edges aren't sharp. Well, this may look familiar. This is the layout for uh, one of the legs that we did on the Gothic bench. Uh, and I've just got a bit of MDF here, just so I can prove to you how uh, <laughs> good or otherwise this trammel is. I've got my writer set up. This is all uh, set to size. And uh, we'll just see how quick we can go. see we can do all sorts of trammel work very quick and easy. Uh, this bit that I cut out with the bandsaw actually there was no need to do that you could just have a straight square sitting on top to, to build up the, the depth that's required. Um, I've demonstrated that you can use uh, festal tools very successfully uh, to cut uh, plastic uh, I used the uh, CMS unit with the TS55R on its lowest speed possible, no problem at all. I cut out plastic on the uh, Capex with no problems at all. And I've actually used my writer on again its lowest speed uh, to cut out these uh, slots. And so uh, you can do it in an ordinary workshop with no problem at all. I'm rather pleased with that. So I've now got a, a quite a reasonable travel and of course I can now use the pin from my Carvex 420 uh, trammel uh, to uh, fit in here and uh, I'm good to go. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.